So thus far, we've been thinking very small, but in this video, we're gonna start thinking big. We're gonna talk about data flow and how data flow correlates with good React architecture. A good app architecture is going to be a cross between a Christmas tree and a river. And what exactly do I even mean by that? Broadly speaking, good React architecture is going to look very similar to a tree. You're going to have a root, and at the bottom, you're going to have smaller limbs. As you go up the tree, the components are going to become smart. They are going to be in charge of data and logic. And as you go lower to the tree, they are going to become dumb components. And Currently, all of our state and all of our logic is being held in dumb components. We want all of our state and all of our logic at the top of the tree where the smart components are. This will allow our app to function very similar to a data river. We can trigger the API, go get our data, and the data will flow down to the dumb components. And the dumb components will house the events where the events can hop up into the smart components, trigger the logic, go get the data, and this component can trigger the data river once again. And this is the process of how apps work. The events are going to jump up, the data is going to flow down, and this allows us to have very fast and very beautiful apps. And we need to go ahead and get our state and logic out of the search components and into the app component so that we can have good React architecture. So let's go ahead and VS Code and let's do some refactoring. Okay, so we are now in Visual Studio Code. And what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste all of this out of search. This is now a dumb component, and we are going to take all of this code, go into our app.ts, and we are going to paste it within our app.ts, and we are going to bring in all of the appropriate imports. So I'm gonna go here, gonna go bring this in, gonna bring in synthetic event, just like this. So now what we need to do is we need to pass down all this data. We need to pass down the state, we need to pass down the handle change, we need to pass down the handle click, and what that entails is just making props for it. Remember, props just pass things down. It is the tube that communicates our data. And in doing that, all we need to do is we're going to create an on click. I guess you could name these whatever you want to, but I'm going to uh, stick to the same names for everything because just I think it just makes things look a little bit better. We're going to go search. We're going to pass in our search. And then we are going to pass in, what is it, our handle change. So we're going to go, I'm just going to, could actually just copy and paste, paste this if you want to. I'm gonna go handle change, just like this. And everything seems to be working, but now what's going to happen is TypeScript's going to yell at us. This wouldn't happen in regular React, but this happens in TypeScript because we need to let the props know that there is data coming down. If you're going to change the data flow, you're going to have to restructure the props in order to let TypeScript know that what type, you're gonna to have to let them know what type of data that you are sending down. And the best way to do this, I think, is to just split screen it and then go over, actually, I'm gonna bring this over here. I'm gonna bring this one over on the other side. And then you can look and then just copy this over into your interface. So I'm gonna say on click and we are going to pass in an E because it we're passing down an event and it's going to be a form event or it's we're passing up I should say and this is going to be a synthetic event actually it's not going to be a form event so make sure that you have your type right so this is this right here so we're passing in a synthetic event and we're also returning void most of the time in react you're going to be returning void because react is functional react does not want you touching outside state only in certain circumstances. So a lot of the times it's just going to be void. All right, so let's work on our search. So we also have to uh, put the search in here and the search is either going to be a string or undefined. If you just put, you could, uh, possibility, you could just put string in there, but because it is state, it's going to be undefined a lot of the time. So you need to make sure that you 
anticipate that so i would also set that to undefined or else you're going to get a bunch of squiggly lines okay so the next is going to be the handle change and the handle change is a change event so i'm just going to take this i'm going to copy it say another event just go ahead and paste that in there it's going to be void as usual so that looks good now what we need to do is we need to actually set up our props so that our props can be communicated through the params if you don't set up your props none of this is going to be passed down and the props control also where things go in the html so we have since we just typed all this up it's really easy to figure out you basically just put all of this into here because it's being passed down as a param and that looks like we have everything done it looks like it's actually working so i'm going to go into the local host here and i'm going to check it out to see if it is working go ahead and inspect go console our on change is working and our on click is now working we have successfully extracted the state we learned about data flow and our app is going to be built for the future videos anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button as always thank you for watching